Hey, this is Troy from Planet 76. We've got some really good Sixers-focused content coming your way today. Make sure you subscribe to the pod so you can be in the know when we release new content. Enjoy the show. Welcome back, Sixers fans, to Planet 76, your source for all things Philadelphia 76ers, episode 99. That's right, 99, one away from 100, which will be coming up next, but we're excited to be here for episode 99. Uh, Got a lot to cover. My name's Troy. Michael's here with me, as always. Today's episode, we're going to flash it back a little bit to the regular season and uh, the playoff um, you know, series that were talk about those, give some awards, give some credit where credit's due. Also have some awards for, um, you know, things that we didn't exactly like, you know, like, um, worst individual performance of the playoffs. We're going to give our take on that. Uh, we're going to give our takes on the best moments and the ups and downs of the regular season and postseason, as well as, uh, get a three minute or so recap from myself on the season. That was, uh, we did the same thing last year and it was a lot of fun. So, um, with all that being said, though, the 2022-2023 NBA season uh, is officially in the books. It did come to an end uh, last night. We're recording on Tuesday the 13th. But last night, the Denver Nuggets were crowned NBA champions. Nikola Jokic finals MVP as they beat Miami in five. Uh, Michael, why don't we start there for just a quick moment. Uh, what do you have to say about that and Denver's run to, to winning it all? Yeah, shout out to the Nuggets. I think they they pretty much you know they pretty much steamrolled their way through the NBA playoffs. They only yeah. lost four games, and two of them were in the second round. So it was. I'm sorry, that wasn't. No, they they know. did lose to the. Wait, who did they play in the second round? When did they play the Lakers? Timberwolves. Lakers was conference finals. Second round. Why am I drawing a blank? Suns, yeah. Yes, they only lost to the Suns twice, and they just Nikola Jokic, fabulous player, Jamal Murray, fabulous player, and I think the the Nuggets are probably going to find their way back there next year for sure. Yeah, could have been the Sixers. Just saying, <laughs> not going to rehash old discussion, but just saying. Just but saying. congrats to the. Congrats to the Nuggets. Very well deserved. They were great in the Red Guard season, and they made a count in the finals, and they won. Yes, they did. They they were dominant. Um, not to mention, you know, just the playoffs, but all season. They're the one seed in the West. They were up top for a lot of the season, and um, credit where credit's due. They they earned every single bit of that. What I find interesting. You know, obviously Miami went on an incredible run to beat Milwaukee, to beat the Knicks, and then to beat Boston, uh, and then to you know just to make it to the finals and play against the one seed Denver as an eight seed is remarkable. Um, but you just think about it, and I haven't seen anyone tweet this, and I I I don't know. I'm kind of proud of myself for thinking this way, but <laughs> you, you like you look look at Miami Heat's last nine games in the playoffs. They lost seven out of nine. You know, think about that. They, they were up 3-0 against Boston. They lost three out of four, but they escaped Boston, and then they lose four out of five against against the Denver Nuggets. And so they lost seven of their last nine in the playoffs. I don't think a lot of teams can say that because if you lose that many in the playoffs, you, you don't you know you lose four and you're out in one series. But they lost seven of their last nine, so they went ice cold after a really hot start. But not to take away too much from the run they went on, uh, just kind of just kind of an interesting point there. But, again, today's episode, talking about the Sixers season that was, uh, we'll do some more of that as, you know, again, as the weeks go on. But we'll give some dates uh, that are upcoming, like the NBA draft and all that is going to include and free agency coming up at the end of the month. And talk about some rumors, talk about just some Sixers updates in the world uh, that they're in right now, again, as we officially are into the postseason. Give our latest on James Harden and 
uh, what the Sixers might be looking to do again at the end of this month with free agency happening in just 17 days. So uh, we did do a, a regular season kind of award show ish a couple months ago, but we're going to rehash a couple of those and bring out some new ones on this episode. And so uh, I think we'll start there and then we'll go to our playoff recap awards and then uh, we'll do a just overall six or season recap. Very so excited for those playoff awards. That's right. That's right. So let's uh, let's run through the regular season ones quick and we'll get to those playoff ones in, in just a minute. So um, there's five that we want to give out for the regular season and I'm just going to have you, you know, Take the floor here. Give all five of those MVP, overachiever, underachiever, biggest surprise, whatever that might be, and most improved player. Um, again, we, we if you want to go back and listen a few episodes ago, we did go into some more detail on some of the uh, you know some other awards, but these are ones we want to give out today. So, Michael, the floor is yours. Regular season awards for those five categories. Go for it. Yeah. So I mean, MVP is pretty obviously Embiid for obvious reasons. I don't think much needs to be said nope. <laughs> in regards to explaining that. So MVP, Joel Embiid. Overachiever? That's a good question because I I feel like for the most part a lot of a lot of people or I'm sorry, a lot of guys on this team just played the way we thought they would play mm -hmm. i don't i don't know that anybody on the team really overachieved maybe tyrese maxi i think is the only real person that i would give this to okay looking at it through a different lens you could say d anthony milton because i don't think many people saw what he could have been for the sixers what he was for the sixers this year I think right. DeAnthony Milton is also a fair recipient of this award, but I'd probably have to go Tyrese Maxey. Okay. If you, I mean, what would your thoughts be on that? If you, if you had to Tyrese choose, Tyrese Maxey, yeah. So, um, Tyrese Maxey, I like that. Um, you know, he, he's, his production's just gone up every year, um, and he was big. There, you know, there were, he, you know, obviously James Harden with the history he has in the league is an incredible scorer but like Tyrese Maxey was the second scorer um, for this team a lot of the season and that's an overachieving thing when you're on a when you're in your third year in the NBA you're on a team with Joel Embiid Tobias Harris James Harden and, and others um, so I, I think that's fair all right and then the last three and then I'll give you mine so underachiever for the regular season I yes I don't know. I don't know if I can name an underachiever because by the same token, I don't know if anybody on the Sixers really underachieved in the regular season. I Could I could I say Matisse Thybul because Sure. He I, he technically That's was fair. a Sixer most of the regular Got, season. Yep. Sent out of I'd the have deadline, to go Matisse yeah. Thybul. I I hate to rehash that again. A lot of this is kind of opening up old wounds from this team <laughs> but i'd have to go with matisse because i mean again if you've ever if you've seen the show if you've seen us on planet 76 if you follow me on my page you probably get where i'm coming from and even if you don't i think you can understand by watching matisse Thibel the past three years why he was an underachiever this year why he was ultimately traded at the trade deadline these things go hand in hand. He underachieved again, and this was the last straw. He got traded. Pretty simple. I'd have to give it to Matisse. I don't know that I can give really feel comfortable slash confident in giving it to someone else. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, what's left here? Biggest surprise. So whatever that means to you, you can interpret that any way you want as far as if it's a game that they, they won or lost or a moment that surprised you or a player or the coach and the decision i don't know whatever it is your biggest surprise of this season biggest surprise was hmm i don't i don't know why can't i <laughs> why can't i figure this out biggest surprise i guess by the same token the anthony melon because i despite how well he played 
it still was surprising to me how good he really was because I I was a huge fan of the pickup back well, nearly a year ago today. Right. Not nearly a year ago today. What am I saying? Nearly a year ago. But I still was very surprised, I think, with how he played. I think he was just awesome. And I knew he was going to be a good pickup, but I didn't know he was going to be that good. So I, I, I think I'd give that to DeAnthony Melton. Okay. I like it. I like it. And last but not least for regular season, most improved. I don't know if you already touched on it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Is it Tyrese Maxey to you or somewhere else? Yeah, I think this one goes to Maxey as well. It took another okay. massive leap this year, a leap that I personally did not see coming. I posted, I guess it was either at the end of last offseason or the beginning of this season, I said, listen, don't expect Maxey to take another huge leap. Usually guys don't take another huge leap in their <laughs> third year. Usually it's just something small. I was wrong. I was very wrong. Yeah. Maxi took another huge leap, not only in points, but in shot attempts, in uh, three-point percentage. Awesome. Yep. Just amazing improvements all across the board. And at this point, the sky is the limit for Maxi. I don't. I'm, I'm no longer going to put a limit on him as a player because when I did, it was destroyed. So I <laughs> was very was very pleased i think maxi i think maxi deserves this award most improved player for okay sure. fair all right that's also where i went i'll start there i went most improved i went tyrese maxi everything you just said i mean he took another jump he, he top i don't know top handful in the league in three point percentage um, on more shot attempts you know over 20 points a game had some really incredible performances you know I think early season against the Raptors when we went 15 for 20 from the floor for 30 something or 40 something yeah I don't even remember but a lot of points um he was he was pretty incredible and he made another jump um amazingly enough all right my MVP like you said Joel Embiid not much to say there um he was just unbelievably dominant dominant uh for the regular season um deserving of the MVP of this team and the league in the regular season. All right, my overachiever, uh, you touched on him, but you went Tyrese Maxey. I'm going to go DeAnthony Melton. You know, you said he Love also it. could deserve it, and I started to smile when he said that because I was like, that's who I picked. So DeAnthony Melton, um, you know, and, ha- and I'll get you t- as you, you touched on, a big portion of that overachieving in a sense of like, he, this is his first year with the team. We didn't know exactly who we were getting. You know, we've seen DeAnthony Melton play mm-hmm. in Memphis, but not every night like we do as a Sixers fans. Um, and so he overachieved in that sense as he just he came in and did a lot defensively for this team and did a lot offensively for this team. He was just really, really good. Mr. Do Something, appropriately named, uh, overachiever for this team. My underachiever for this team uh, is none other than Montrez Harrell. I, I like forgot he, he was on the team. <laughs> I forgot exactly. he played for the Sixers this year. Oh, exactly. my gosh. That's I should have picked him. I should have picked him. Can I, I like steal where yours you went instead? with Matisse. Nope. I like where you went with Matisse, so we're going to leave that on there. <laughs> All uh, right. Because I think that's good, too. Because, uh, like you said, he didn't he didn't achieve to a level where it's like, okay, he's going to be in the playoff rotation or a game, and we're comfortable with that. Let's ship him off at the deadline, and that's exactly what they did. But Montrez Harrell, uh, I chose that one a lot rooted in what I had – my expectations of him coming into the season you can go listen 35 episodes or whatever ago at the start of the season I was pretty big on Montrez I thought you know he's the best offensive backup for Joel Embiid the Sixers have had and it just didn't pan out he had a couple games that are worth noting and boy were we wrong he was the underachiever uh, in a big way for this team and it's it's unfortunate because I thought that there was some promise there my biggest surprise uh, this is going to show you how um Again, how high I was on Montrez Harrell. My biggest surprise of the year is Montrez Harrell. Wow. Um, I was that surprised at how bad he was and how he was just cut out of the rotation. And yeah, he's my biggest surprise because I was pretty big. I mean, he, think about it. Two years, three years ago, he was six man of the year under Doc. I was like, they're reuniting. This is going to be great. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> or so um, we and, thought. And I w- and I was surprised by that. So that's all I'm going to say. Uh, regular season awards in the books. 
Let's move on to the playoffs, and we'll go. We'll alternate yes. back and forth on this one. Uh, we'll excited. alternate back and forth. Who is your playoff MVP? Now, <laughs> hear me out. I I don't think Joel Embiid was the playoff MVP. Okay. I don't think it was James Harden. Okay. Although he has the second best case to get this award based on the criteria of so the way he played gonna... against the Celtics and against the Nets. Going? I'm not going to lie. Where am I going? Hold on. I'll tell you. In a second. <laughs> With the with with the criteria that we have, which is the playoffs, I don't know that James Harden was the Sixers playoff MVP. And like I said, especially the way he played against the Nets, he was okay. He was good. The Celtics obviously was amazing, but I'm not sure that's enough. Okay, my playoff MVP is PJ Tucker. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, I'm standing by that. Okay. I think PJ Tucker. I think PJ Tucker. Not he, not that he single handedly won games for this team. Right. There were moments this playoffs where I said to myself and I said out loud and I said on my page on my Sixers page on Trust Love. <laughs> yeah. I said they won this game because of PJ Tucker. I, I yeah. said that on multiple occasions. There were multiple games in the playoffs where PJ Tucker did something or had a sequence of events where. He won them. That he was the reason they won them that game, mm-hmm. and I can't quite think of a game off the top of my head. But I got one. You got one. I'm sure there's there's one or two. PJ Tucker. The reason that the Sixers signed him was for the playoffs. We said it all season, and it was true. Yeah, the stories were true. PJ Tucker was amazing in the playoffs. I don't care about the scoring. I don't care about the one for four three-point shooting the fact of the matter is he won he helped this team win games in more ways than than Joel Embiid and James Harden most nights did he was the only guy that really showed up with any consist with any form of consistency on this roster Maxi was off and on Harris was off and on and Embiid Harden obviously were off and on P.J. Tucker was the only guy that brought it every single game. I don't really care about the numbers. I don't care about the points. He was the only guy that brought it every single game. Each Both series, this dude was out there just do, trying to do everything to help this yeah. team win games. He's my playoff MVP. I like it. Outside the box, but I like it. He, um, The game I thought of when you said that was game four at home against Boston. Yeah, you know the overtime win, and he just a couple big rebounds. You know, just getting on Joel and B when he was at the free throw line after he was had a couple struggling possessions, little things like that. Um, you know, it, we've said it all year long. PJ Tucker, we brought him here for the playoffs. You just said it, and it was really cool to see. We've talked about it, you even more than me, but like even cool to see others recognize it um, during the playoffs and and to kind of shut him up a little bit. Um, was kind of cool for PJ. So I like that. Your MVP is PJ Tucker. Uh, my M- So we have, spoiler alert, playoff awards. We have seven categories here. James Harden's the answer for me for like seven of them. <laughs> I, was just, I was just thinking that. So, looking at these categories, I'm thinking, James Harden's going on with a lot of awards this year. Yes. James Harden is the MVP uh, of the playoffs. Okay. It, it would be very easy to pick if he didn't have some of the duds he did, which we're going to touch on. Um, yeah, but his two performances and beating the Celtics are enough for me. Um, and two of their okay. three wins, so that's enough for me. MVP. All right, best Fair. individual performance. Not you know, obviously not MVP of, of a series, but one game individual performance. Who, who, what game and who? James Harden, game one of the Celtics Sixers series. One could argue, and most people did, and I probably still would, and you probably still would, that he won them that. He was the reason they won that game. Point blank, nothing else to be said. James Harden's near 45-point triple-double, which I'm going to go get the, the the box score for right now, yeah. was the reason the Sixers won that game. And it, I thought, I thought, I really did. I thought it was going to set a tone for the series. James Harden, 
yeah. comes out looking like one of the, looking like the best player in the league. Let's just let's just keep it a buck. Let's just call it what yes. it is. He he came out looking like the best player in the whole league, and I was thinking, dude, the Celtics are. I'm sorry, the Sixers are going to win this game. I mean, win this series. Um, so my performance is James Harden, and here we go. We got 45 points. Wait a minute. I thought he yeah, had almost triple double, double. Whatever. 45 yeah, points, six assists. That game four. That was game yeah. four. 45 points, six assists, seven for 14 from three, which was an absolute big one at that. anomaly of a three-point shooting performance from James Harden because he didn't have another three-point shooting game like that after. He had well, he went six for nine in game four. But right. he seven for 14. That was one of two 10-plus three-point attempt games for James Harden in the playoffs. And mm-hmm. both games that he did that, he was over he was fifty percent or or more on threes both Interesting. times. Interesting, yeah. So, forty five points, six assists, only three turnovers, solid. For seven of 14, 17 of thirty, which was literally his best uh, game from the field in the whole playoffs, except for when he scored forty two, of course, <laughs> sixteen of yeah. twenty three in that game. So that's <laughs> the one I almost went with was game four. Um, in overtime because, you know, obviously he had a clutch bucket to send it to overtime. He had a clutch corner three that won the game. But I did go as well with game one, James Harden against Boston, um, just for Perfect. what it meant and how sweet a victory that was. <clears throat> Not that game four wasn't, but to do it in Boston, to hit that shot over Al Horford, to do it without Joel Embiid, um, I, I, it just carried it over because, you know, you think Sixers could have somehow maybe sort of won game four without James Harden doing that. Game one, James Harden doesn't do that. They have no chance of winning. Um, and so that's where I kind of drew the line. So game one, James Harden for me is the best individual performance. Uh, worst individual performance also for me, and then we'll toss it to you, my worst individual performance, James Harden. Um, <laughs> game three of this series is my choice. Um, he was bad. And, you know, box score, whatever. But... You know, before I pull up the box score, just to talk about Harden's performance in a game where it's tied 1-1, right? You did exactly what you wanted to do in Boston. You got one out of two, um, and you're and James Harden played extremely well in game one. And then game three, you come back home in front of the crowd, and James Harden goes three for 14 from the field, um, two for seven from three. He had five turnovers, all of which were in the first half of this one, I believe. And the Sixers lost game three at home by 12 it was he was he was bad. It was to the point, you know, you're watching and you're like, this guy needs to come off the court. It was that bad, and um, you know, I I don't I mean that was the worst individual performance in in the sense that if he played anything decent, we probably could win a could have won game three because um, it was you know again a twelve point loss, but James was that bad. So that's my that's my worst performance. Literally, pick any. James Harden game outside of game one in Brooklyn, game three in Brooklyn, game one in Boston, and game five in Boston. And you could get So what do you, you think? <laughs> the worst are you going are you going playoffs? You want to go game six, four for sixteen, thirteen points? No. I'm gonna well, considering the stakes, yes, I'll go with that. Four okay. for sixteen, just abs over six from three, abysmal. Five turnovers again, ties his playoff high this year. Only right. nine assists. He I was. Mean, you, you can't take more points than you score shots. I'm sorry, that was horrible, horrible um, terminology used there. <laughs> you can't score more points than shot attempts. That's, you can't, that's unacceptable. You can't have more shot attempts than score points. Yes. Right. Yes. That That's four for sixteen. He yeah. Uh, again, like you said, you can kind of pick. Which he actually did next game. Here. He did it again. The game. Right. The next game. He did it again. The game seven. He, he right. Scored and nine points. Took reason, eleven shots. To me, the reason game six is worse is because individually, you know, Sixers got blown out in game seven. In the second half. Yeah. Game six again. James Harden does anything just like in game three at home. Sixers could win. And he didn't. Yeah. They, they put up 86 as a team, and he went 4 for 16. So game 6 is a great choice for worst individual performance. 
Uh, I'm curious of this one for you. So who's your glue guy? If to, if PJ Tuck is your MVP, is he also your glue guy? I'm not mad about it, but is it is that who it is or who else? Do we have playoffs? a set? Do we have a set criteria for the glue guy or no? That, Just... what, however you want to interpret that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, PJ Tucker is also my glue guy. Okay, I like. I it. I I again I don't know who else could even get this award I, I, could you say d'anthony melton probably maybe could you say I, so paul reed paul reed no nope, maybe that's not where i went that's not where i went no oh okay that's, i mean that's I I'm, just, I'm just thinking like who else could you who else could you add i'll go ahead and so i don't know if fans will like it but okay i went with uh someone that gets some hate in, in sixersville at times okay um, but in order to understand my pick, you also have to look at round one because it's a playoff okay. recap. I almost went to Anthony Melton, but the Anthony Melton struggled at times. Mm-hmm. I didn't go PJ because I know you were going PJ. <laughs> you can um, go PJ too. Don't, don't let that stop you. I know. You. Um, but I went with Tobias Harris. Okay. That's the reason. Let me let okay. me show you some numbers here. Um, I like so numbers. Tobias against Brooklyn uh, shot the ball at 57% from three and from the field. He had 21, 20, 15, and he closed out the series with a team-high 25 in Game 4. Keep in mind, he did that without Joel Embiid. Keep in mind the way he got his buckets late in the post, outside. He he was pretty big to finish out that series for the Sixers. Um, you know, he, he came out against Boston with 18 and 16. He had a couple duds in Game 3 and 4 um, and 6. Tobias Harris, not very glueish there with his 1 for 7 and 2 points in Game 6, but... Grand scheme of things, like no one was perfect in this series because uh, <laughs> yeah. Sixers would have won. But uh, Game Seven, he was the team's leading scorer. Not that we're even talking about Game Seven at all, because who cares? You you were leading scorer in a forty point blowout. But Tobias Harris, particularly in the Brooklyn series, he was very good and he kept things together. When Game Three and Four in Brooklyn were not easy um, at all, they they could have lost both those games, and Tobias Harris was a big reason they didn't. So that's my glue guy um, for. The playoffs. All right. Um, I think I tweaked this one after I sent this to you, so my apologies. But best That's game, I, I said best game, and I also characterize that as maybe your best feeling after a win in these playoffs. What was the what was the best feeling you had? Um, I you know I have a couple. I'm not sure which one you're going to go with. What's the best feeling after a win? Best feeling after a win. Was the, the, the Sixers win Game Five in Boston? Yes. Yeah, they went three two. Yeah, that's that was probably the best feeling. That's mine. <laughs> yeah, best feeling after oh, a win, dang. Game Five in Boston. That's mine. I also honorable mention to one we just I just mentioned is Game Four against Brooklyn in Brooklyn. Okay. You know, to do that to do what they did, and then of course Game One is pretty up there. But I think we'll I think we're good with Game Five. That felt really really good. Uh, best team win of the se- of the season. Best they looked. I all also, season. I also would like to give a quick shout out to Tyrese Maxey because he will not be making my award ballot this year. Mm. But game five against Boston, by far his best. Actually, not yes, by far his not his by not by far his best playoff game, but definitely one of his best games this year. Thirty yeah. points, six for twelve from three, elite. That's fifty percent on twelve attempts. That's Steph Curry numbers. 10 to 21 from the field, seven rebounds, only one turnover. So, shout out to Maxi. He will not be making my award ballot, but I just wanted to give him an honor, honorable mention. He's he's runner up. Absolutely honorable mention for Tyrese Maxi. Okay, uh, two more here. Um, best moment. Uh, characterize that however you want. My best moment mm-hmm. is the ISO. James Harden, Al Horford gave oh, him nice. an absolute bucket top of the key to get the Sixers game one win I lost it I absolutely lost it Uh, what's your best moment of these playoffs my best moment was definitely that James Harden corner three in um okay in game game five game four yeah that that was definitely my best moment just the way it all went down nobody was expecting that to happen James Harden's wide open in the corner somehow and he shoots it and makes it i mean i, I think that's the best that's i think yeah. that's that's some of the best you can get honestly 
Yep. Absolutely. All right, last mm. one, and then we'll get some other talk going. So your biggest True. surprise, whether that's a game again, whether that's a moment, whether that's a player in these playoffs, uh, just anything, anywhere you want to go, just the biggest surprise to you in these playoffs, good, bad, and different. Huh. Biggest surprise in the playoffs this year was anything James Harden related because he surprised you with the good. He surprised you with the absolutely horrible. Um, yeah. Just pick, just pick. James Harden is my biggest surprise in every meaning, in every way you could talk about a surprise. Good, right. bad, scary, sad, unfortunate, depressing. James Harden holds all those titles this year in the yes. playoffs. Yep. So, yeah, that's my biggest surprise. And to no one's surprise very much intended that's exactly what i wrote i said biggest surprise. all right <laughs> uh, james harden and his up and down performances it's right here michael said the same thing and it's just true man like i've never seen quite a series like that where you are so incredibly good putting the team on your back for a game and maybe even a, another one if you count game four and then to just do what he did in other games that was so 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 bad and to go from being, quite frankly, the the best player on the court to the worst player on the court, depending on the day, um, was remarkable, and that was that was quite surprising. And the reason I think it's surprising is because we didn't necessarily yeah. see either of those James Hardens in in the regular season, right? We didn't see James going for forty five in the regular season. We also didn't see him going, you know, three for no. nineteen. I don't think, you know, not maybe once in, in eighty two games. Not but as yeah, a couple. Right. Yeah, like a couple. Handful we of we times. got a very consistent James Harden all season, and then the playoffs were anything but. So that's just that's kind of why it's the biggest surprise uh, to me. All right, that's our playoff awards here on Planet Seventy Six. And now, before we um, continue with the little Sixer season recap, I think we're going to end with that later. But just some quick updates. So Sam Cassell mm-hmm. has uh, officially become an assistant with the Boston Celtics. Um, my take on it is because, you know, it's hard to, you know, you apply for the head coaching job, you don't get it, it's hard to stay. Um, yeah, That's I agree. as simple terms I can put it, right. Um, some upcoming dates, the NBA draft, June 22nd, so just nine days away from that. Free agency starts June 30th at 6 p.m. We'll see what happens there. And then, again, be on the lookout. Episode 100 of Planet 76 is coming up wow. uh, next, so we're excited about that. Crazy. I crazy. didn't. I it didn't. Crazy. Not that I. Not that I never thought we'd make it to 100 episodes, but I didn't think of like, hey, I didn't think of the possibility of, hey, you know, one day we'll have 100 episodes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's crazy to to really think about that. It is. And that's full length episodes. We've had, you know, obviously Planet mm-hmm. Seven Six Five Minute Recaps. We don't even count those in that episode total. No. Um, so you count all those. We're 130, 135, uh, which is crazy. So. Uh, let's address a couple rumors, if you will. You you talked about an untrust to love. I don't even remember if I fully saw or watched or what. I was kind of saving it for this. Uh, the Bradley Beal rumor and Tobias Harris being linked in a possible quote unquote trade. Um, we'll talk about that. We'll give an update on James Harden and what you've heard lately there. And then Fred Van Vliet officially becoming a free agent. Nick Nurse is now the head coach of the Sixers. So uh, your take on any of that, all of that, none of that. <laughs> Not a whole lot. I I do like to wait to see. You know, I mean, obviously, we've had some rumor discussion at right. uh, previous episodes. We've talked about certain things and not talked about certain things. What I will say, though, is just as a kind of generalization or generalized statement regarding the Harden thing, whoever the Sixers do get, if they end up losing Harden to replace him, you're not really going to replace James Harden because the guys on the market can't do what Harden does. They're they're right. Not only are they not as good as James Harden, but they just don't have the capabilities that James Harden does. So even though you're trying to fill that void, that James Harden size void in your team, you're not going to be able to do it. It's not going to happen unless you get James Harden in. We don't know if that's going to happen, whether it's Bradley Beal, whether it's Fred Van Vliet. These guys do bring different play styles, which are beneficial to the Sixers, but they're also not as beneficial as James Harden. So for everybody, it's like, 
James Harden's replacement. Who are they going to get to replace James Harden? The answer is nobody. They're not getting anybody to replace James Harden. They're getting a player to put in place of James Harden, but that player isn't going to make up for what James Harden does and what he brings you on the court. Okay. I like that a lot. I like the way you, you broke that down because, yeah, I just really, really like that. It's good. They're not replacing James Harden. You. you can't. Um, you can't. That's it's not, really it's good. It's impossible. Right, and so we got to be careful about the language as Sixers fans that we use, you know, to say that because it's just it's just not the reality. Um, I like that a lot, and, and I will say, you know, I think what you said on Trust the Love about you know the Tobias Harris Bradley Beal is one that's not going to happen. <laughs> like I think you kind of came yeah. out like saying that off the bat, unless um, the Wizards are just like wishful thinking, throwing the white flag, right. you know. Right, but then, I mean, you know, if for, for a team to do that and, and get rid of a star like that. You don't want to pick up a Tobias Harris contract, the age-old uh, dilemma that the Sixers have if in a potential <laughs> deal uh, for Tobias Harris. So interesting stuff there. All right. Um, I'm going to end with a quick, the quickest recap of the 2022-2023 Philadelphia 76ers you have ever heard, Michael. Are you ready for this? All right. I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to try. Just like last year. Here we go. Um, you can start the timer now. Here we go. Okay. All right. The Sixers season started the exact way that it ended with a loss in Boston on October 18th. Uh, the Sixers did fall to 0-3, including a loss to the San Antonio Spurs, which was Joel Embiid's first 40-point performance. That loss was disgusting. Everyone thought that the Sixers were done for. Uh, key moment uh, of the season <laughs> Uh, came in game six. Tyrese Maxey dropped uh, 44 points in Toronto on 15 for 20 on Friday, October 8th, 28th. Just an incredible Tyrese Maxey game. Uh, followed up a couple weeks later by Embiid having his best game of his career, arguably, against Utah on November 13th. He went for 59, 11 boards, 8 assists, and 7 blocks. Uh, later in the season, Embiid's notable scoring runner as part of that run, rather, consecutive games. Listen to some of these numbers. So Embiid uh, in the consecutive games went 33, 26, 42, 59, 32, 32. In December, not even in that same run, went 35, 39, 38, 53, 31, 34, 28, 22, 44, 35, 48, 37. <sighs> Joel Embiid, his points per game from November to December, uh, in November to January, 34.1, 35.4, 34.9 across those three months. Sixers sat at 12 and 12 in early December. Then they reeled off eight straight wins to get to 20 and 12. Maxi, James Harden, and Joel Embiid all missed significant time uh, before January. And then the Sixers went on a run in January. Uh, but before that, they beat Ben Simmons and Brooklyn at home in late November without the aforementioned Embiid, Maxi, and Harden. It was an incredible game from a lot of guys. A lot of fun getting that win. Uh, Sixers, again, got healthy and hot in January. They had a perfect West Coast road trip that Michael predicted, I will mention, uh, with wins <laughs> over the Jazz, the Lakers, the Clippers, the Blazers, and the Kings. Uh, back home in late January, Embiid and the Sixers uh, came back to defeat Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets at home. Embiid outdueled Jokic in that one with 47 and 18. James Harden was good in that one. 17 points, 13 assists, and zero zero turnovers with 13 assists is insane uh sixers did bid a farewell to matisse thibel at the trade deadline and picked up jalen mcdaniels uh, at the all-star break the sixers sat at 38 and 19 keep in mind again they were 12 and 12 at one point uh, they had a tough three-point loss that we all remember to boston at home on a tatum game winner and be just getting it after the shot clock expired from three-quarter court that he made to send it to overtime that did not count not long after that, the Sixers came back, uh, if, uh, you know, in, in uh, comfort behind fashion on the road to snap the Milwaukee Bucks' 16-game winning streak, uh, an incredible stretch to end that game. Uh, March 4th, uh, that, that happened on March 4th, and that spurred them on to another eight-game winning streak that put the Sixers in contention for the one seed. Uh, Joel Embiid was incredible in that stretch. We don't have time to go through the numbers he had in those games, but he was incredible. Uh, Sixers went out la went out west again in late March and did not have as much success as they had earlier with losses to the Warriors, Suns, and Nuggets, uh, which pretty much all but eliminated them from contention for the all important one seed. They finished as the three seed, 54 and 28, uh, behind the Milwaukee Bucks and Boston Celtics playoffs. As we just touched on, the Sixers rolled um, to a sweep of the Nets 
in round one. Max, Maxi led the led the team in scoring in games two and three of that one. Again, Tobias Harris in game four without Joel Embiid led the team in scoring after Joel had a knee injury in game three, a scrappy game three that he finished and got the Sixers the win. Uh, on to Boston. Sixers stole game one in Boston behind an incredible performance from James Harden. Sixers lost game two in Joel Embiid's return to play in blowout fashion. Sixers struggled at home. James Harden, we touched on it, struggled at home in game three, and they lost by 12. Sixers won game four in overtime. Really, really fun game to watch. James Harden had clutch bucket after clutch bucket. 42 for him, 34 for Joel Embiid. And then the game of the year for the Sixers, pivotal game five. Sixers dominated, absolutely dominated. Um, And we got a regular season James Harden performance behind Joel Embiid's 33 and Tyrese Maxey's 30 that we touched on. Tobias Harris was good in that one as well. Game six, Sixers could not put Boston away. Jason Tatum struggled for three quarters. He was like literally one for 14 at one point, I think. He was. Um, was. Sixers went ice cold down the stretch, couldn't make a shot, and Tatum started making shots, and it did not end well. Devastating loss, 95-86. Then game seven, Sixers are down three at half. Got blown out in the second half, as you kind of could see coming, honestly. Uh, Celtics got really, really hot, and the Sixers went really, really cold. It's a simple game. You put the ball in the basket, and the other team can't, you're going to get blown out. And that's what happened. And that is the Sixers 2022-2023 season recap. Woo! Fantastic. <laughs> 27 six, five minute recaps made an appearance because that was just under five minutes. Was Fantastic. it? Fantastic, okay. yeah. Nice job. Wow. All right. And I think that's it for this episode episode 99 be on the lookout for episode 100 again michael said it we are just happy to be there yes sir on the doorstep of 100 and uh happy that you guys are all along on the ride with us on planet 76 we'll see you next time uh, to look ahead to what's to come for the sixers and break down some more of what has been the year 2022 2023 we're on to the next season. Everybody's O and O, uh, and <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> so I, I, I agree on. with that. We're turning the clock forward, and uh, we're ready to see what happens. Turning the calendar forward, I should say. We'll see you next time on Planet Seventy Six. If you are a Philadelphia Seventy Sixers fan, this is the podcast for you. Planet 76, a weekly podcast covering all things Philadelphia 76ers. We'll see you next time.